going on everybody is going for the latest news and today we are talking about prodigy that's right prodigy was he silenced by the elite well because we all know all the stuff he was saying or whatever and talking about you know talking about things he wasn't supposed to talk about you know we all saw Interviews, comments at the interviews. I actually got some gems here for you guys to prove what I'm talking about. That this man, he knew stuff that he was saying things that he wasn't supposed to be talking about. When you're in the industry, you can you can't start this talking about certain things. That's just they're not gonna have that, you know. So. Yeah, he he was releasing a lot of gems about the industry and about even today's music, about today's artists. He he knew what today's artist was going to be like in today's time. Well, that was just crazy in itself. But I'm gonna let you guys take a listen for yourself. Niggas, you know what I'm saying? You know how I do it, man. Worldstarhiphop.com You know what I mean? H-N-I-C-2.com So when it poppin', man, this is what we do, man. This is 50.com You know what I mean? We run this shit, man. We control the internet game. Let me let y'all niggas know something, man. You know what I mean? Got a lot of fucking garbage-ass rappers out here running around like these niggas ain't supposed to be rapping, son. You know what I mean? This game is meant for a select circle of few, select few, man. Everybody's not for everybody, man. Just don't think you, you can just start rapping and shit, man. Like, stop it, man. I'm tired. I'm tired of it, man. I'm tired. You know what I mean? It's time to just let it out. A lot, a lot of corny ass niggas, man. A lot of corny rappers, man. I'm just like, yo, man. I could, I could name a list of a hundred corny ass rappers, yo, right now. Mad niggas from New York. You know what I mean? New Jersey, you know what I mean? Cali, everywhere. They all over the place, man. These corny ass niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? You now I'm all deep to it, man. We from that era, man. Where, yo, man, it's a select few, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a select few. And that's what it is today, man. I don't give a fuck. Ain't nothing changed, man. Always remember that. Ain't nothing changed, nigga. You know what I'm saying? See, we still here doing it. Ain't nothing changed. You know what I'm saying? So. Fuck all these niggas, man. You gonna see. I got the blog up and all that. You know what I'm saying? Basically, like, like to me, I just don't listen to these niggas. You know what I'm saying? That's. I prefer not to listen to this bullshit. I just prefer to listen to what I do. I do what I do, and that's that. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's certain shit I don't listen to. Like niggas, like, like Max B and like, like Jim Jones and Cam, like all that garbage shit. You know what I mean? All the hell rail shit. Like, I ain't into that shit. You know what I mean? Like. Like Cassidy, certain niggas, I just ain't into certain niggas, man. You know, that might be your preference, but I'm trying to tell you, man. Rap is for a select few, man. Everybody not supposed to be rapping, man. These niggas, a lot of these niggas need to cut it out, man. Do something else with yourself. Get something else popping, man. Leave our shit the fuck alone, man. You know what I mean? Look how look how long Mob Deep do it for, man. Look how long Pete and Mob Deep. Man, look how long we go for. Look what we do for a living, man. We do this shit for a living. You niggas is playing games, man. Stop fucking playing games with how I eat and how I do my thing, man. Nigga, do something else, nigga. Go sell some drugs, nigga. Do something with yourself, nigga. Go fucking paint a house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go paint a studio, nigga. Do something else in the music business. That's all I'm trying to say, man. You ain't got to go try to rap because you see P rapping, because you see Hav rapping. You know what I mean? Or whoever your favorite MC is. Stop it, man. You know what I mean? Do something else. Stop trying to do what everybody else doing, yo. You know, because I know that's what's going on. Because these niggas ain't supposed to be rapping. I mean, who really like these niggas? Who really like these niggas? Tell me. I want to know somebody that truly going to buy a Saigon album or a True Life album or any of this bullshit these niggas is doing. Like, for real, man. Shit is corny, son. Man, cut it out. And I know a lot of people out there, they feel the same. They feel the way I feel. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I... I used to fuck with Pun. That was my nigga. I fuck with Pun. Fat, I can't listen to a Fat Joe album. I don't buy that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I do. That's what I don't do. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I do for a living, man. 
And I don't buy into a lot of this bullshit. Like I said, you know what I mean? Me and Pum did songs together. You know what I mean? They they slapped Joe on a couple songs I was on, but I was never into Joe. I was never a Fat Joe fan. That's what I'm trying to tell you right now. Certain shit I'm just P's not into, man. And these are the things that I'm not into. You know what I'm saying? Like you you be the judge. I don't give a fuck how how it's gonna make people feel or whatever, any of that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm telling you how I feel, I'm being for real. I don't listen to you, nigga. Your shit is corny to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure somebody's shit is corny to you, but you just won't speak about it like I will. You know what I'm saying? Like, straight like that. But you see what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? I put a long blog up, you know what I'm saying? Put the little blog thing. You know, we got the internet on Smash. That's what we do right now. You know what I'm saying? We do the little blog thing. We do it the best. Mob Deep do it the best. You see our Kite channel. You see what I'm doing with Kite. You see what I'm doing with HNIC2.com. World star hip hop, you know what I'm saying? This is 50. You know, we the best in the business. Why you think I mean when I say that? What the fuck you think I mean when I say that, man? We the best in their business. There is no competition for us, man. All that other shit is garbage. That's what I mean, son. You know what I'm saying? Like, get the fuck out of here, son. This shit is whack, son. Cut it out, please. Nobody's buying it. Nobody likes it. You, you're hurting our ears. That shit is annoying. Like, stop it, man. It's because niggas got a chain, some jewelry, and they dress like the motherfucking part they want to be the rappers and shit. Like, cut it out. Let, you know what I'm saying? Let the rap niggas do it. We the professionals, son. We professionals at what we do. Like, cut it out, son. Go fucking do some carpet thing or something, man. You know what I mean? Who bothers go, you the most in this game, right? Go roll a blunt. You know what I'm saying? Fucking, who bothers me the most? Who's the worst? The worst. <laughs> Who's the worst motherfucking rapper on the planet? Oh, God. I think Joe Buttons is on that line. He's on the edge right there being the worst. Like, Joe Buttons, like, you're doing a million bars, a million mixtapes. Like, what the fuck is a mood music? You know what I'm saying? You're doing murder music, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Cut it out, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's just my opinion. I don't listen to that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, some people think that's hot. Some people actually think that shit is hot. Like, but come on, who you gonna listen to? Them or Pete? Who the veterans? Who the seasoned veterans at this shit that can tell you what's hot and what's not? You know what I'm saying? That's There you have it, son. Man, I ain't on no hater shit. I don't ain't a hater. Do your thing, nigga. You know what I'm saying? But personally, this shit is not popping, son. That shit don't pop in the hood, man. I'm talking about the grimy niggas in the hood. I don't know a little, um... Supposed to be hood you from, but in the real hoods of America, that shit don't fly. We don't listen to that bullshit, son. You know, it's mob deep, nigga, you know what I mean? G-Unit, that infamous, that gutter, that burnt biscuits, that motherfucking ice pick music, nigga. Oh, man, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of niggas I, I can say I don't feel, you know what I'm saying? But you gonna see what I'm talking about. I'll put it out there. It's all love, man. One more thing. What about, you know, the Fat Joe thing? People might think you're just getting on this because 50s. He's going at Fat Joe, you know? Oh, no, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Like, I don't got nothing personal against Fat Joe or nothing, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I don't listen to his music, you know what I'm saying? That's not, what it, that's not my choice. That's not my cup of tea at all, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't listen to that shit. There's nothing about it that makes me be like, ooh, I got to go to the studio and make a banger because I heard that. Nothing about it at all, you know what I'm saying? So, that's just my brutally honest opinion. So if who, you want to be real... I mean, like, for real, man, like, Mob Deep, man, I'm biased like a motherfucker, Mob Deep, G-Unit, you know what I'm saying, like, my niggas, because we making that real shit, man, Me, Mob Deep and G-Unit is in the same vein, you know what I mean, we both from Queens, we both got the gutter shit, the hard, crazy hard shit, you know what I mean, so it is what it is, man, I mean, like, yo, man, a lot of people, I'm like, oh, P hating, uh, P popping shit, like, yo, whatever, nigga, I'm talking my mind, man, you know what I'm saying, I bet you scared to talk your mind. Like, you're gonna see, probably see other niggas talking their mind, because they see P talking his mind. Like, yeah, that shit is whack, son. You know what I'm saying? That shit is corny to me, son. Like, straight like that, man. Like, feel how you feel and do how you feel. I, don't, I truly don't give a fuck. There's nothing you could do to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, word, you already know what it is, son. You know what I mean? Niggas just gotta be like, you be P, wild boy. You know what I'm saying? Leave P alone. That nigga, wild boy. Word. Wow, such bold statements by Prodigy in that interview there. 
he was definitely dropping gems he wasn't supposed to be dropping. <laughs> definitely dropping gems he wasn't supposed to be dropping. Um, that's some another gem coming up. Another interview that he did. You know, check this out. Rap, uh, and we're very, very uh, excited uh, to have uh, Prodigy uh, Mob Deep on with us. He's a Grammy Award-winning rapper and one half of the hip-hop duo Mob Deep. Uh, he recently served a three-year sentence. Oh, for the evil Second Amendment. That's right. Uh, boy, I tell you, they went after him when he started exposing the Illuminati. And he was recently featured in the 2011 uh, documentary Rhyme and Punishment, a film that documents hip-hop artists who've been incarcerated. Uh, he is the great-great-grandson of uh, founder of Morehouse College and a new book, My Infamous Life, the Autobiography of Mob Deep's Prodigy. I don't know how long we've got it because I think we got time zones scrambled and we're about to go to break. Uh, but I've got so many questions for you, sir, and we appreciate you joining us today. Not a problem, Alex, man. I'm a big fan. Well, we're, we're a fan of your work. A lot of people constantly ask me, and we're going to go to break here in a minute, about Illuminati, Illuminati. They see Jay-Z, all these rappers doing you know, all these weird Illuminati symbols and things like that. I know folks are going to pause that now and say, I was making those. I'm making those to show people. Um, that's how they do that online. But the point is, you've exposed them. Uh, bottom line, what's your take on that? I mean, to me, you know, uh, it's definitely it's definitely not a joke, man. There's it, 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 a lot of real stuff going on out here in this in this world. It, secret societies are real. You know, um, it's definitely very obvious, you know, that um, they're at work and it's, it's at play in, in the music industry, in the food industry, politics, everywhere you turn is everywhere. Um, you just got to read the signs, you know what I mean? The writing on the wall, basically, is all in front of your face, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, once people just learn about it and do a little research about it all, they'll be able to see, like, oh, wow, this, yeah, I understand what's going on, you know what I mean? Absolutely. You've got the floor. Lay it out. Break it down. I mean, this, this reported letter... Uh, when you were set up and sent to prison for exercising your Second Amendment rights, I mean, did you write this letter? And because it's very poignant, and uh, you know, I agree with much of it. So, uh, you got the floor. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wrote a lot of letters while I was in there, man. Um, I was doing this thing for Vibe Magazine, you know, um, just writing letters from from prison, just expressing myself and and, and things I wanted to get off my chest things that were on my mind and I wanted to let people know. And I wanted to show them, even though I was inside, you know, locked in a prison, you know, I wanted to show them that I still had no fear in my heart, you know, about speaking my mind and letting people know what time it is. There was, there's no reason for me to fear because it's really nothing, there's nothing they can do besides kill me. And, and I'm not afraid of that, you know what I mean? Like, um, I, don't, I don't think, Right now, they they at the point where they would take it that far. I think they, like, this plan that they got into effect, and it's been in effect for hundreds of years or whatever, I think it's so embedded in people's brains now. They got people so brainwashed in this world that they don't even really care anymore, you know what I mean, about people like Alex Jones, people like Prodigy. Like, they're like, go ahead and tell the people all you want. We got, we got these people so brainwashed, there's nothing you guys can do about it. That's how they feel, you know what I'm saying? And when I say they, I mean, you know, the power and the structures that's in place, you know, that's, that's there to control us, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, looking at it, well, well it's, it's twofold. 30, 40 years ago, if you talked about this, they would give you a fast-acting cancer. They would kill you. It's on record. Much of it's been declassified. But people still had courage and got the word out. And so because so many people spoke out, they've now flipped it and said, okay, we're growing the opium in Afghanistan. Okay, we're shipping the cocaine in. Okay, we're shipping the guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. And so they've decided to just, to, to just go with the revelation of the method instead because they're desperate. But if we really try to shake people out of their trance, as you and others are doing across the board, they we can beat them if we can get people out of the trance they're in. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I, I always say, like, God always wins at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Uh, good always going to be evil at the end of the day, man. No matter how bad it's looking, 
You know what I mean? No matter what's going on, you know what I mean? Um, good is always going to win. You know what I mean? Um, but right now, you know what I mean? The devil definitely got the world in the headlock. You know what I mean? It, it's crazy. It's definitely crazy. And it's at the point where they got it. They got it so far. Like I said, they don't even care. They put it. They put it in all in our face. You know what I mean? The information. It's the information age. It's everywhere. It's all over the internet. What's going on? You know, it's all in these books. It's in movies. It's in. You know, it's all over the place. And they got people so brainwashed. You know what I mean? With 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 all the uh, you know, fashion and you know. Jewelry, especially like in the in the hip hop world, you know, in the hip hop community, in the urban communities with where, where, where I can where I come from, you know what I mean? They got us so brainwashed with with with, with fashion, jewelry, and like and, and sex and and all this stuff. We like we don't even care to even think about what's going on. You know what I mean? Like it, a lot of a lot of the people that I'm around, like I look at them sometimes, and all they're concerned about. Is what I just said, like the fashion, the jewelry, the sex, all the stuff that is materialistic and stuff that like is not going to do nothing for their soul or their life. Well, you've had it all, and and you know it's not like I've had it all, but I mean I've had a lot of success, gotten to meet most of, I mean most of the famous people in Hollywood at one time or another, and once you meet them and find out that it's nothing, it's not fulfilling. What what is fulfilling is having truth and information and decency and honor. And uh, but but for folks that have never really had some form of notoriety or fame, which you've had much greater than I have, they can't understand it. They're they're always scrambling for it, reaching for it. D uh, do you agree with that statement? And, and what can you say to young people and others that feel unfulfilled because they're not somebody making ten million dollars a year like a top rap star? Man, I would say it's not all about that. Man, life life is not about. Um, you know that chasing chasing that dream life life is about you know what i mean being happy you know what i mean it's about it's about having a, you know a pure heart pure soul eating good family you know what i mean yes. uh, love you know what i'm saying like your relationship with your spouse or whatever um you know that these are the things that life is about raising your children properly making sure that you know each generation gets better than the last one you know smarter and healthier than the last one all of that these are the things that life is about it's not really about chasing all these crazy dreams you know what i mean because you know even though people want you know it's, people want success you know every, every anybody wants to be successful you know what i mean in life and and have some decent money where you could be comfortable and things like that but you know some people really just take it too far and they get caught up in that whole money and success thing you know what i mean yes i think it's a well it's a, it's a hierarchy of needs success is great as long as you don't compromise to get it and as long as the success itself isn't the goal success in doing good success in beautiful art success in developing things that's wonderful the globalists the controllers create a false success and set up false icons for us so that we'll chase basically it's false idols uh, yeah yeah you're right that's that's exactly what it is you know what i mean um yeah man it, it it's bad man it's bad because you know I, I, I try to reach out and you know, share the information that I know with a lot of people. You know what I mean? Just yes. read stuff that I've read over the years and, and learned about what's really going on, you know, with this government and what's really going on, you know, in this world and everything and how we should really be living and taking care of our families and our life. And I try to share a lot of the information with, you know, my friends, my peers or whatever that I grew up with or that, I, I, that I'm around a lot. And um, I, had, I had to learn the hard way that, you know, you, you can't just just push information on people. You know what I mean? You got to, they got to want to know it. You know what I mean? They got to want to change their life. They've got to open the door. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And um, it's sad that it, it's like that. But really, that's how it is, man. You know, um, I know a lot of people now that I see, they're like, yo, yo, prodigy, man, you, what, what can I do? Like, I was getting a lot of letters while I was in, I was in prison, right? And 
people write me and say, yo, Prodigy, what can I do, man? I'm trying to share information with my homeboys and my friends, and they're not listening, they don't care, da, da, da. And I would write them back, like, listen, they got to want their information, man. You, you know, they got to want that change in their life, man. You can't just make people, you know what I mean, change. That's, that's something that... That's a phenomenon that has to happen on its own. You know what I mean? I'll tell you what, Prodigy, stay with us. We've got to go to break for just a moment. Prodigy of Mob Deep is our guest. We'll be right back. More, <clears throat> excuse me, more bold statements and stuff about Prodigy. You know, just not really caring what he say. When you're in that industry, you just can't do that, unfortunately. You know, so it was marked from start. Got some more gems. Find a gem here. Check this one out. One of your life lessons this time. One of them, pain. I look at pain as my friend. This pain is like somebody that's going to gonna always be there. Illness. And, you know, we learn from each other. You know what I mean? So you found the good in it. My name is Dr. Siri Satnam Singh, and I'm a licensed therapist. This week, I'm sitting down with a rapper who has a blood disorder that has led to a lifetime of immense physical and mental pain. Today, he is trying to find meaning in his suffering. This is Prodigy of Mob Deep. Pain, you've had a lot of pain in your life. Um, I was diagnosed with sickle cell anemia, SS type. That's like the worst, the worst form. Um, when I was three months old. Sickle cell is for the people that don't know, you know, um, it's a hereditary blood disorder where my blood cells don't carry enough oxygen. And it, when a blood cell doesn't carry enough oxygen, it change, my blood cells change shape. And then they interlock with each other. And then it just, it's like a domino effect. They all start interlocking and wherever that happens at, that's where the pain happens as excruciating pain. Like it's to the point where I can't even move. They have to pick me up or put me in a wheelchair and carry me to the hospital. Like I can't move my body, I can't move my legs or anything because the pain is just incredible. I couldn't do any strenuous exercise, couldn't do any contact sports. Um, you know, there's no cure for sickle cell. I don't know, I, I feel like it gave me a mental disorder a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It was really traumatic, just going through all that pain as a kid, and then next thing you know, a week later, I'm back to normal. It made me not believe in like, God. I ain't believe in God. Just, you know, having conversations with God, begging God to make the pain go away, and then the pain wouldn't go away. So I'm like, who the hell am I talking to? I'm like, God is not responding, so I don't believe in that. You know what I mean? Power. What does that word do to you? power, the loss of power. The loss of power? Having the diagnosis of, that you have, that that's the loss of power that you said you, it made you really angry at one right. time. You don't, you don't like to be powerless. I never thought about that until you just said it. Like, that definitely triggers yeah. me to become self-destructive. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I just get angry and like, oh. What's, what's, what's one episode that really triggered, you know, your destructive behavior when you had a loss of power? Any business deal, anything? Yeah, it was the main one. I was doing this business deal with somebody, and uh, they actually took some of the footage. It was like we were shooting something, and I had spent a lot of money on this, and they had, like, hijacked the footage and was demanding more money from me. I was fucking pissed. I threw the phone through the window and all that when I got off the phone. And um, that night, when I laid down to go to sleep, um, you know, all the lights was off in my room, and I'm laying there, 
and I seen a black shadow walk across my room. <clears throat> and it looked like, the only thing I could describe what it looked like, like the black Spider-Man. And you went on any drugs? Nah, nah. No. Nah, no, I just six wanted, years straight, I'm like. I just want to deepen you into super this healthy. is your life. Okay. Super healthy, clear-minded, okay. I'm doing positive things, yes. like I'm not. So I just laid there and I put the sheet over my head, like, like a little kid and just like forced myself to go to sleep. And I woke up the next morning, the pain woke me up. I haven't been sick in six years. Mm. And I was in so much pain, I didn't even carry it to the hospital. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I knew what happened automatically. I already knew what it was. I already knew what that black shadow was. It's a story that's told about this black shadows that attach themselves to people here on the earth and they feed off of negativity, they feed off of anger. I said, oh shit, mm -hmm. like, that shit is real. Mm -hmm. And it showed itself to me. I was allowed to see it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and this, was, this was when I was about maybe 26 this happened, maybe 27. From that point until age 33, I got locked up. You know what I mean? I just been on like a downward spiral from that point. You know what I mean? And that was, I was locked up for a reason, because I wasn't living right. It had nothing to do with a crime. It had to do with everything spiritual. That was like a slap from God. Like, the fuck are you doing? I'm just hearing all this, the incident that you talked about with your business deal activated emotional pain and mental pain that you could not overcome. You couldn't work your way through it. And then you got this physical pain. What a, what a, trying to make yourself sick. Hmm. All right. <laughs> you know, quit making yourself sick. All right. Lift above it throughout life with all of this consciousness you have, you have to defend against what you know, what you see, what you hear. What does it feel, feel like that. to hear that? What does that do to you? I feel that that's true. Yeah. I've, I started asking God, you know, once I started coming to the realization that there is a God, like, am I supposed to believe this? I'm supposed to believe this? When I'm learning and what, what I'm being told, if I'm supposed to believe this, then show me something. Give me a sign, show me something. And I was, I was shown many things. I'm sure. Give me a witness now. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to have a witness. You know what I'm saying? Which was the mother of my kids. She witnessed some, something incredible with me, you know what I mean? That happened. And uh, what, what we saw scared the shit out of us. I was asking to see uh, a UFO, basically. And it came over my house. It started shining lights in our bedroom. You know what I mean? The whole neighborhood blacked out at first. And uh, I looked out the window, looked down the block, and I seen all the power was out. First it was a white light. And I thought it was a police helicopter looking for somebody outside. And then all these colored lights just started coming in the room. It was dead quiet. And the lights was changing like many colors. Like, mm -hmm. And um, it was pretty um, significant, man. It was like undeniable. Mm -hmm. And it became because I was asking for it to come. Wow. It's, so you have had this physical pain, emotional pain. You discussed earlier your mental pain. And so maybe you were given this life at birth of pain so that you could feel the pain and work through it and elevate others. All right. It's almost like that whole quip of healer, heal thyself. Mm. And then you have the message to give. All right. So you're having a very supernatural life experience, but not deepening into it that which is super normal. You're trying to 
rationalize and make it normal. Right. It's uh, not normal. It's not normal. I don't think you're normal. And here you are feeling weird, different, <laughs> disjointed, uh, conflicted. Because you're trying to be normal. You're not normal. And that's okay. No. It's really okay. We love you for being that. We, we honor you for being <clears throat> that. But you have to honor you and love you for being that. Man, you could tell <clears throat> that man Prodigy was nervous that whole interview. He knew what was up. He knew that was at the game. They must think we fools, though. You know, that's what I'm talking about in the harmony. I love that little Manati. And the cause of death, y'all know what it was. <clears throat> Choking on an egg. Now, I don't know about y'all. I was born that night, not last night. Nah, I ain't believing that. Not by a long shot. Choked on no egg. Can't get me to believe that. Just want to say recipes, prodigy. And God bless.